Throughout history, archaeologists have discovered many strange and fascinating objects buried underground or tucked away in hidden places. Some of these discoveries are so unusual that they seem otherworldly. Among these remarkable finds are objects believed to have been left behind by beings from distant galaxies, such as the enigmatic Drapa Stones, found by a team led by Chipu in the mountains between China and Tibet. What secrets might the government be hiding from us, particularly concerning artifacts that challenge our conventional understanding of history? Join us as we delve into the mysteries of the Drapa Stones, the final puzzle of advanced civilizations from beyond our world. The Unbreakable Ancient Code. In 1938, a bunch of explorers, led by an explorer named Chipu, went on a trip to the Bayan Kara Mountains. These mountains sit between China and Tibet and are pretty rough. While they were exploring, they found something cool, weird round stones about a foot wide. These stones had fancy patterns on them, like spirals and tiny pictures. People got excited about these stones and started calling them the Drapa Stones. They tried to figure out what the patterns on the stones meant, but had a hard time. Even though they worked really hard, they couldn't crack the code, so the stones stayed a mystery. People heard about the stones and started talking about where they came from and what they were for. Some thought they were special to ancient people, like Lucky Charms. Others thought they came from space and were left behind by aliens. Not many folks outside the science world knew about the Drapa Stones. They didn't make it to the news or magazines that much. But in the world of archaeology, they were a big deal. People kept trying to understand them better, looking for clues about what they meant. Some smart people thought the patterns on the stones looked like writing from a long time ago. Others thought the lines on the stones were just decorations, meant to make them look nice. Decades later, a Russian scientist named Dr. Tsum Nui supposedly uncovered secrets about the Drapa stones. He claimed the symbols on the stones told a wild story about aliens crashing a spaceship in the Bayan Karaya Mountains ages ago. These aliens, known as the Drapa, landed on Earth but got a cold shoulder from the locals. Dr. Tsum Nui said the Drapa stones weren't just old rocks. They were like ancient CDs with alien knowledge. Some people got excited about this idea, thinking it meant aliens influenced our past. But most archaeologists didn't buy it, saying there wasn't enough proof. Even though many folks doubted Dr. Nui's story, some groups still found the Drapa Stones interesting. They thought the stones proved aliens visited Earth way back when. These ideas made the stones even more mysterious to some people. But in the world of serious archaeology, the Drapa Stones didn't get much attention. They were seen as too weird and not backed up by enough evidence. So they stayed out of the spotlight, mostly talked about in weird magazines or online forums. When you open the Voynich Manuscript, it feels like stepping into a puzzle no one's figured out yet. A man named Wilfred Voynich found it in 1912 while selling books in Poland. This old book dates back to the early 1400s. Inside its 240 pages, you'll find all sorts of strange things, like talking about plants, stars, animals, and medicine. The part about plants is really strange because the plants it talks about don't match any plants we know today. Then there's the part about stars and planets, but some of them are ones we've never heard of before. People from all over the world who know different languages have tried to understand what the book says, but no one's cracked the code. Even people who are excellent at solving secret codes have tried, but they haven't been successful. Despite all the guesses people have made about where the book came from or what it's for, no one's sure. Some people think maybe aliens wrote it, but others think it was probably made by someone trying to teach about medicine. But since there aren't any clear answers, the Voynich manuscript remains a big question mark. Over time, people have come up with many ideas about the Voynich manuscript. Some think it might be an ancient medical book, but others say it could be a book of magic spells. There are even people who believe it's a trick, 
made up to confuse everyone. In the Voynich manuscript, there's a part all about strange plants. These plants don't look like any plants we know today. Some have leaves or flowers that don't match anything we've ever seen before. People who study stars and planets also find something odd in the manuscript. There are pictures of zodiac signs and things in the sky that nobody recognizes. People who know many languages from around the world have tried to figure out what the words in the manuscript mean. They've looked at the letters and tried to see if they match up with any known language, but it's like trying to solve a really hard puzzle. Even people who are experts at solving secret codes have given it a shot, but they haven't had any luck. Throughout time, folks have brainstormed various notions about what the Voynich manuscript might be. Some reckon it could be a spell book, while others think it's a guidebook for plants and medicine. There are even those who ponder if it's a treasure map. But until someone figures out the code, the real meaning of the manuscript remains unknown. Despite many people taking guesses about the Voynich manuscript, nobody's managed to decipher it. Some folks believed it might be an ancient book about plants and medicine. Others even speculated it's a message from outer space, written by aliens. But even after all these years, nobody's cracked the code. Historians who study old things have tried to understand the Voynich manuscript. They've looked at the words and pictures in the book, trying to match them with what they know. But it's been like trying to solve a puzzle without all the pieces. Some clever folks, known as cryptographers, who are good at solving secret codes, have tried to decode the manuscript. They've examined the patterns in the letters, trying to make sense of them. But until now, they haven't succeeded. Despite everyone's guesses and attempts to understand it, the Voynich manuscript remains a puzzle. Some think perhaps it's not meant to be understood, like a riddle meant to remain unsolved forever. Others believe it's just a big trick, meant to fool people into thinking it's important. Over time, the Voynich manuscript has gained fame for its mystery. People all over the world have heard about it and wondered what secrets it holds. Some have even tried to make their own copies of the manuscript, hoping to solve the puzzle themselves. Beyond the speculations about its origins, some suggest that the manuscript could have been a textbook for scholars, teaching about health and medicine. But without any proof to back up these ideas, the Voynich manuscript remains a mystery, resisting all attempts to uncover its secrets. The story of the star child's skull is full of secrets and wonder. Its strange features and mysterious past draw us in, making us want to know more. The Controversies Surrounding Star Child's Skull The tale of the Star Child's Skull is akin to unraveling a puzzling enigma, steeped in intrigue and curiosity. Discovered deep within a dim mine tunnel near Mexico's Copper Canyon during the 1930s, this peculiar skull remained concealed from public view until the late 1990s, when Lloyd Pye brought it to the forefront of attention. Its eerie presence stirred both fascination and bewilderment among those who beheld it. The skull's peculiar traits defy the norms of typical human anatomy. Despite its diminutive size compared to an average human skull, its bones exhibit an unexpected resilience, suggesting a biochemical composition that challenges conventional understanding. Notably, its facial features characterized by reduced cheekbones and an unusually large cranial capacity, have left researchers perplexed. Many enthusiasts entertain the notion that the star child's skull may originate from extraterrestrial realms. They draw attention to DNA analyses purportedly indicating an alien lineage, igniting speculation about its cosmic origins. Nonetheless, skeptics remain dubious, disputing the validity of the DNA evidence and attributing the skull's anomalies to well-documented medical conditions. Conditions such as hydrocephalus, characterized by an abnormal accumulation of fluid within the brain, or craniosynostosis, which accelerates the fusion of skull bones prematurely, offer plausible explanations for the skull's unconventional characteristics. Despite these rational explanations, the allure of extraterrestrial speculation continues to captivate the imaginations of many. 
The ongoing debate surrounding the star child's skull has ignited fervent discussions among scientists and enthusiasts alike. While some steadfastly uphold the belief in its extraterrestrial origins, others advocate for a more grounded interpretation rooted in human biology and genetics. Nevertheless, amidst the controversy, the truth remains elusive, shrouded in uncertainty and conjecture. Despite the persistence of the debate, skeptics remain steadfast in their skepticism, unwilling to be swayed by purported DNA findings. They question the reliability of the testing methods and argue that the results lack conclusive evidence supporting claims of extraterrestrial lineage. Instead, they propose that the skull's unique characteristics may be attributed to known medical conditions. Hydrocephalus, a condition marked by an abnormal accumulation of fluid within the brain, and craniosynostosis, which hastens the fusion of skull bones, present plausible explanations for the skull's atypical appearance. Moreover, skeptics highlight the absence of comprehensive scientific research, corroborating the extraterrestrial hypothesis, emphasizing the need for empirical evidence to substantiate extraordinary claims. Furthermore, skeptics caution against the dangers of embracing sensationalistic explanations devoid of empirical support, warning against the proliferation of pseudoscience. They advocate for a rational and evidence-based approach to investigating anomalous phenomena, emphasizing the importance of skepticism and critical thinking in evaluating extraordinary claims. During the ongoing debate, the truth surrounding the star child's skull remains elusive, obscured by conflicting interpretations and competing theories. While proponents of the extraterrestrial hypothesis remain resolute in their convictions, skeptics continue to scrutinize the evidence and challenge the validity of their assertions. Before Chipu and his team set off on their journey, they were excited. They didn't know they'd find some amazing bridge. Understanding the Secrets of the Aluminum Wedge In the realm of ancient discoveries, the IUD Aluminum Wedge is a real head-scratcher. Just picture stumbling upon this strange thing in 1974, throwing everyone for a loop. It's made of aluminum, which wasn't a big deal until way later, like the 1800s. But here's the kicker. It was found hanging out with mastodon bones that are over 11,000 years old. That's like finding a smartphone in a cave from the Stone Age. People can't wrap their heads around how something made of aluminum ended up chilling next to ancient bones. It's like finding a time traveler's gadget in a history book. This little wedge is about 20 centimeters long, mostly aluminum, with a dash of other stuff mixed in. Some folks think it's a piece of some big machine, maybe from outer space. But not everyone is sold on the idea that aliens left this thing behind. Some say it could be a leftover part from World War II, buried in the wrong place by accident. Picture a soldier's gear accidentally ending up in a time capsule with ancient artifacts. It sounds far-fetched, but stranger things have happened. The place where they found the wedge adds another layer of mystery. It's no ordinary spot. It's seen its fair share of action during wars. Imagine a secret military operation going wrong and leaving behind a piece of futuristic gear. It's like a scene from a sci-fi movie. Despite all the theories floating around, nobody has cracked the case of the aluminum wedge. It's like a riddle waiting to be solved with each answer leading to more questions. Some people love a good mystery, but this one has got even the experts scratching their heads. The aluminum wedge is a reminder that history is full of surprises. Just when you think you've got it all figured out, something like this comes along and throws everything into chaos. It's enough to make you wonder what other secrets are hiding beneath the Earth's surface, waiting to be uncovered. How could an object made of a material seemingly out of sync with its archaeological context end up nestled beside ancient remains? It's like finding a sports car parked next to a horse-drawn carriage. The aluminum wedge's presence next to such ancient artifacts is like a puzzle piece that doesn't fit the picture, challenging everything we thought we knew about the past. Imagine digging up a fossil and finding a smartphone buried alongside it. 
That's how mind-boggling this discovery is. The juxtaposition of the aluminum wedge with relics from thousands of years ago defies logic. It's as if someone from the future accidentally dropped their gadget in the past. The aluminum wedge itself is a strange find, both in what it's made of and how it looks. It's not very big, only about 20 centimeters long, but it's got scientists scratching their heads. What's got them puzzled is that it's mostly made of aluminum. But here's the kicker. Aluminum wasn't around until pretty recently in human history. So, finding it next to old bones is like spotting a spaceship in a museum. What's even weirder is the other stuff they found mixed in with the wedge. It's like finding fancy spices in a recipe from the Stone Age. Totally unexpected. These other bits suggest whoever made this wedge had some serious skills. It's like they had technology we can't even dream of. Could this mean there was high-tech stuff, way before we thought? It's a big question that's got scientists losing sleep. Imagine if we had to rewrite all our history books because of a little metal wedge. It's enough to make you wonder if everything we thought we knew about the past is wrong. People have all sorts of ideas about what the aluminum wedge could be. Some think it might be from outer space, like a piece of a spaceship that crashed here ages ago. Others think it's not that exciting and could just be something left over from World War II, like a part of a plane or a bomb. Where they found the wedge makes things even more interesting. It's like finding a treasure map in a haunted house. With all the fighting that happened there, maybe the wedge has something to do with the military. Perhaps it got buried during a secret mission, lost and forgotten until now. People who believe the alien theory have all sorts of wild stories. It's like something out of a movie, where aliens come to Earth and leave behind strange objects. But those who think it's more down to Earth think it's just a coincidence. It's like finding a dime next to a dollar bill. Not a big deal, but still kind of cool. Some experts say the aluminum wedge could have been part of a plane or a bomb used during World War II. It's like finding a shell casing on a battlefield. Not rare, but still important. Others think it might have been part of a secret project, like a spy gadget or a prototype weapon. The truth is, we may never know where the aluminum wedge really came from. It's like trying to solve a puzzle without all the pieces. Imagine trudging through icy Antarctica, surrounded by snow and cold winds. But beneath the frozen surface lies something incredible, waiting to rewrite the history of ALH. The Remarkable Tale of ALH 84001 Antarctica isn't just a big icy land with nobody around. It's a place where scientists find cool stuff that changes what we know. In the freezing cold and snow, they find amazing things that rewrite what we learn in school. But there's something else cool about Antarctica. It's like a special spot where space rocks fall. Yes, you heard it right. Antarctica pulls in rocks from space like a magnet. These rocks, leftovers from when stuff in space crashes, land on Antarctica's icy ground and wait for someone to find them. And one of these rocks has a story that's caught everyone's attention. Back in 1984, a group of brave scientists went exploring in Allen Hills, Antarctica. Even though it was freezing, they kept going, hoping to find something cool. And they did. They found a strange rock, not much bigger than a potato, weighing just over four pounds. Little did they know this plain-looking rock had secrets that would amaze everyone. The story of this rock is incredible. It traveled millions of years and millions of miles through space before landing on Earth. And now, here it was, sitting in Antarctica, waiting to show its secrets to whoever found it. Years later, in 1996, Scientists made a big discovery when they looked at the rock, known as Allen Hills 84001, or ALH 84001 for short. Inside the rock were tiny structures that looked a lot like fossilized microbes. These tiny things looked just like bacteria, making people wonder if there's life beyond Earth. If it's true, this would change a lot about what we know. It would be the first time we found proof of life outside our planet, which would be really exciting. Scientists around the world were both excited and careful because this was a big deal. Finding possible microbe fossils in ALH 84001 got everyone talking. 
It made people wonder if there's life out there and what it might be like. But not everyone was convinced. Some said maybe the fossils weren't from space, but from Earth instead. The news about possible tiny fossils in ALH 84001 got scientists all excited. They got really interested in studying space life and wanted to learn more. As scientists looked closer at ALH 84001, they found new ways to study it better. They used fancy tools and tricks to figure out what it was made of and how it traveled through space. Scientists worked together from different fields to make cool discoveries about space life. They used fancy gadgets and sent out spacecraft to explore planets like Mars. After finding possible fossils in ALH 84001, scientists got really interested in Mars. They studied its surface, weather, and history to see if it ever had living things. They sent special robots to Mars to collect samples and see if it could support life. These robots roamed around Mars, looking for clues about its past. Studying Mars gave scientists clues about how it could have supported life long ago. They found signs of water and rocks that showed Mars might have been a nice place for living things. Scientists didn't just look at Mars, they also checked out moons like Europa and Enceladus. They thought these moons might have hidden oceans where life could exist. Finding possible fossils in ALH 84001 was a big deal for space science. It made people really curious about life in space and inspired scientists to keep exploring. As scientists keep studying ALH 84001, they're determined to learn more about space. They want to keep exploring and discovering new things about the universe. As researchers learn more about ALH 84001, they uncover more secrets about where it came from. By studying its stuff, they're learning about its journey from Mars to Earth and how our solar system formed. Even though people keep talking about ALH 84001, its real importance is still uncertain. But it's a big deal for space science, and it's making scientists ask more questions and look for more answers. Since the news about possible fossils in ALH 84001, scientists haven't stopped studying it. They've come up with new ways to check out the evidence and answer lingering questions. But not everyone is sure about the fossils in ALH 84001. Some people think maybe the stuff came from Earth, not Mars. The debate keeps going, and it makes people wonder if the space fossils are real or not. Before Farmer M. Brazel found strange stuff in his field, Roswell, New Mexico, was calm. But things got interesting when he stumbled upon some strange conspiracy. The Truth Behind Roswell's Conspiracy In 1947, Farmer M. Brazel stumbled upon a strange mix of things in his sheep field in Roswell, New Mexico. There were shiny sticks held together with tape, bits of stuff that looked like plastic, and scraps that seemed like paper, but not quite. Unsure what to make of it, Brazel went to the local sheriff for help, hoping for some answers. Word of Brazel's find spread to the nearby Roswell Army Airfield, catching the interest of military folks there. They were curious about the odd stuff and decided to look into where it came from. At first they thought it might be a flying disc, sparking excitement and talk about a UFO crash. This got a lot of folks, including researchers, the public, and conspiracy theorists, buzzing with ideas about extraterrestrial visitors. But as the investigation went on, the military changed its story. They said the stuff wasn't from a UFO, but just bits from a weather balloon that had crashed. Some folks weren't convinced, though, and still thought it was from aliens. Even with the military saying it was just a weather balloon, rumors and conspiracy theories about Roswell kept going. Some people said they saw weird lights in the sky around the time of Brazel's find, adding to the mystery. Others wondered if the military hid something about the debris and what happened. Over time, Roswell became one of the most famous UFO stories ever. It inspired lots of books, shows, and movies, each with its own take on what happened in 1947. Even though there were efforts to say aliens weren't involved, people worldwide still wonder about Roswell. 
Lately, there's been a new interest in Roswell, with some researchers and historians taking another look at what happened. Better technology has let them study the debris more carefully, leading to new ideas and theories. While we might never know the whole truth, Roswell keeps drawing people in to think about whether there's life beyond Earth. As curiosity about Roswell grew, the government moved fast to stop talk of aliens. They said the debris was just from a weather balloon that had gone wrong. With worries about the Cold War and keeping the country safe, the government wanted to shut down talk of aliens. So Roswell faded from the news, becoming a story for people who like to talk about conspiracies. But even though the government wanted Roswell to go away, it didn't. In the 1990s, people got interested in it again. They found out about Project Mogul, a secret plan to use balloons to spy on Soviet nuclear tests. The stuff found in Roswell matched what they were using for these secret missions. Project Mogul was a top-secret project made because the U.S. got worried about the Soviet Union's nuclear power during the Cold War's start. America wanted to know what the Soviets were up to and stay ahead in the arms race. So they launched balloons with special gadgets high up in the sky to spy on the Soviets. These balloons were made tough to handle the tough conditions up high so they could stay up there for a long time. They had special tools like microphones and radar stuff to pick up sounds and signals from far away. By looking at the data from these gadgets, the military could learn a lot about what the Soviets were doing, especially testing nuclear bombs. Even though Project Mogul was supposed to be a secret, sometimes things didn't go as planned and the balloons would break or crash. This caused confusion, especially in far-off places where people didn't see much of the military. The Roswell incident is one example, where people found pieces from a broken balloon, but they thought it was something from outer space. When people found out the Roswell stuff was from Project Mogul, it made sense and showed it wasn't from aliens. But even though the military explained what happened, some people still think it was a big secret and there's more to the story. In recent years, historians and experts have looked into the Roswell story more to learn what really happened. Most people now agree it was part of Project Mogul, but some still have questions and doubts which keep the mystery alive. But not everyone believes the military's story about Roswell. Some people think they're hiding something and that the debris was from an alien spaceship. Even with the military's explanations, some folks still believe in aliens and secret government stuff. The area was quiet before folks knew about the bong pipes in China. But something surprising lurked beneath the surface, waiting to be found. Ancient metal marvels and geological abnormalities. The bong pipes, known by various names such as the bone and iron pipes or Dalingha pipes, have sparked intense curiosity among scientists and conspiracy enthusiasts alike. These peculiar formations, resembling pipe-like structures, dot the remote landscapes of Qinghai Province, China, particularly around White Mountain, also called Mount Bang. Situated approximately 25 miles southwest of Dalingha City, these iron pipes stretch deep into the mountain and even extend into the nearby lake. Ranging in size from tiny, hardly noticeable ones to sizable pipes measuring up to 40 centimeters in diameter, their diversity adds to their mystique. What baffles researchers and skeptics alike is the pipe's purported age. Despite being made of iron, a material prone to rusting, these pipes are believed to be thousands of years old. This revelation contradicts conventional wisdom about iron structure's longevity over time. Moreover, a significant chunk of the pipes, around 8%, remains unidentified by experts, further shrouding their origins in mystery. The ambiguity surrounding the bong pipes has sparked heated speculation and debate within both scientific and fringe communities. Some propose that these structures are remnants of an ancient civilization, citing their exceptional durability as evidence of advanced metallurgical techniques. Others entertain more fantastical notions, suggesting the pipes could be relics of extraterrestrial visitation or remnants of a lost technological civilization. However, mainstream scientists remain skeptical of such theories, 
preferring grounded explanations for the pipe's existence. One prevailing hypothesis suggests the pipes are natural formations, possibly resulting from geological processes or the fossilization of organic materials. This theory gains support from similar structures found in other parts of the world, formed through natural processes over long periods. Despite efforts to unravel their origins, the bong pipes continue to defy easy explanation, fueling ongoing research and speculation. Some researchers use advanced imaging techniques and chemical analysis to probe the pipe's composition and formation. Others study surrounding geological features, hoping to uncover clues about their origin. In the 1920s, people everywhere got excited about finding King Tutankhamun's tomb, starting a big craze called Egyptomania. Everyone wanted to know what secrets were inside the tomb of the young pharaoh, left untouched for so long. Among all the cool stuff found in the tomb, one thing stood out, a dagger buried with all the other treasures. This dagger, now famous as King Tutankhamun's space dagger, was special because of what it was made of and where it might have come from. The dagger's blade was made of iron from a meteorite, a material that puzzled scientists for a long time. Its high nickel content and special qualities seemed weird and got people thinking it might be from outer space. Some folks thought aliens gave the dagger to the ancient Egyptians, while others had even wilder ideas about where it came from. But not everyone bought into these ideas, and scientists wanted to know the real story behind the dagger's strange stuff. Recent studies have given us new clues about where King Tutankhamun's space dagger came from and what it's made of. Scientists looked at the stuff it's made of and found out it's a lot like meteorites found here on Earth especially one found near Alexandria, called the Carr Meteorite. This new info has made scientists rethink their earlier ideas about the dagger being from outer space and look for another explanation for where it came from. Even though it might sound cool to imagine aliens giving ancient Egyptians fancy daggers, the truth about King Tutankhamun's space dagger is still really interesting. Now experts think the dagger wasn't a gift from aliens, but a special present from the Mitanni Empire to Tutankhamun's grandpa. They think this because of how the dagger looks and what it's made of, which fits better with what humans could do at that time. Finding out that King Tutankhamun's space dagger is made of stuff similar to a meteorite found near Alexandria was a big deal. It made people wonder where the dagger came from and if it really had anything to do with aliens. But after looking at the facts some more, Scientists think there might be another explanation for where it came from. We're left with lingering questions as we delve deeper into the mysteries of the bong pipes and King Tutankhamun's space dagger. Are these enigmatic artifacts evidence of ancient civilizations or extraterrestrial visitors? Like, comment, and subscribe to share your thoughts.